is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy related video and time for something a little bit different. Normally you gotta wait until the end of the month to catch up with some stats from me, but this month I thought, well, we're about to go on a road trip over to Wales and I'm wondering how late my stats might be for the end of the month. So why not give you a mid month update for March? Because it's been a bit of an interesting March so far. So let's start off with solar generation. So far this month, we've generated 336 kilowatt hours up until, well, I would say the 19th, but these stats on the charts are going to be up to the 19th. Um, uh, but some of them are going to include some of the 20th today that I'm actually filming. So 336 kilowatt hours generated in total, 99 kilowatt hours from our solar edge array, 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, two kilowatt inverter, 62 kilowatt hours from our 2.5 Solus uh, inverter, which has 2.9 kilowatts of solar panels. That's the east facing gable and the three panels on our garage roof. So not producing very much at 62 kilowatt hours. 179 kilowatt hours from our main array, south facing Solus inverter, 3.68 kilowatts of power from the inverter, 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels on the roof. So 179 plus 62 plus 99 is roughly 336. They don't quite add up because the three figures come from the inverters and the big figures come from my energy and there's a slight difference between them. It gives you an idea of what we're doing. How does that compare to last year though? Well, up until the 19th of last year, we'd only generated 292 kilowatt hours, so an average of 15.4 kilowatt hours per day. Whereas this year, we've generated 17.8 kilowatt hours per day, which this is where it's a little bit odd because it doesn't actually feel like it. March doesn't feel like it's gonna be a very great month. It doesn't feel particularly sunny. Yes, yesterday, the 18th, or day before yesterday, we had a 40 kilowatt hour day. So there's been the occasional day that's been really, really good, but it doesn't feel like it's been a record month or anything like that. And when I looked at the stats, I was quite surprised that we're actually ahead of where we were last March. But last March finished with a flurry. There were some really great sunny days. It became nice and mild. And uh, we had lots more sunshine. So it was a really good March last year. I don't think it's gonna be the same this year. It's either gonna be poor overall or average overall. That's my estimation of what's gonna happen because the weather forecast from what I can see for the next week or so is not looking like it's going to set any records. But when I look at the weather for last year, there were a lot more days where the weather outside was below zero, a lot more freezing frosts. And this year, it's been milder. This year, we haven't had as many frosts. The temperatures in March this year have been quite comfortable, quite spring-like. And that doesn't appear to be the case from last year. So our usage has definitely changed. So far, we've consumed 378 kilowatt hours from the grid, importing at 7.5 pence on the Octopus Intelligent Go tariff. And as you know, I've now swapped to an export tariff. So rather than switching to self-consumption, which I would normally do around this time of year, waiting for a sunny day, not charging the battery, not doing anything overnight, not drawing from the grid overnight at all, almost you know, yeah, self-consumption, running on our own energy. And then during the day, whatever solar we have, that's what we consume. Consume charging the battery, heating hot water, charging the electric cars, running the house, all of those things. Now I'm doing it very differently. Um, heating hot water, I'm charging the electric car, I'm charging the battery and doing as many house things as I can out of the solar period and using the grid at cheap rate energy, 7.5 pence, and then all of our solar energy, as much of it as I can, I'm exporting back to the grid at 15 pence a kilowatt hour, twice what it costs to import. So it's profitable to do that. So it's a little bit odd this year. Um, it is feeling odd letting go, odd not worrying about the solar, but it's really good. There's no infighting in the house about I'm charging the car so you can't turn the oven on, anything like that. The com the competition for the solar energy doesn't really exist because there's plenty of it and it's only being used for the house, the house load. And we're trying to do as many things uh, otherwise on the cheap rate electric. So that's working really well. This month is the month that I'm hoping we're going to have a net credit for the month. Whereas January and February, we still had a, a net energy bill to pay. The export wasn't worth as much as the import was costing us. 
In fact, last month was a little bit odd in February because I couldn't really account for all of the energy we imported. We imported 600 kilowatt hours and I couldn't really see from the data and I couldn't work out where it was all going. But this month is working out quite well. 378 kilowatt hours imported at 7.5 pence. That's a, a net energy bill excluding the standing charge of 28 pounds 35 pence. We've so far exported 231 kilowatt hours, which is much more than half of what we've imported. So we should be in credit because of that, because of the 15 pence and seven and a half pence. All we have to do basically is export half of what um, we are importing and we should be in credit. So 231 kilowatt hours exported at 15 pence is 34 pounds 65 pence. So we are in credit already. But on top of that, we've also had some saving sessions. So with Octopus Energy, we've got Octo Points, where we're earning points for all these extra things, for referrals, for joining in with saving sessions, and the saving sessions themselves, which I think there have been at least three of, three half an hour ones this month. And they come to £16.53. So that's, I think, £51.18 pence between the two. So the cost of energy, 28.35. The export value, Octopoints plus export, is 51.13. So we're well in credit this month, which again shows up nicely because we imported 378 kilowatt hours and exported way more than half of that at 231 kilowatt hours. So it's working out really well this month. We are going to be in credit. So that's, that side's looking really good. But that consumption, the 300 and, what was it, the 378 kilowatt hours, where's all that gone? Well, I've looked at the eddy for our hot water, and this year, this March, we have used 40 kilowatt hours up to the 19th, which seems on target. Uh, last year was actually 49 kilowatt hours. So everything seems okay on hot water, we're quite consistent there. The Zappy EV charging, last year we only used 99.5 kilowatt hours uh, to charge our electric cars. This year it's 217 kilowatt hours. And as I said to Susan the other day, uh, we shouldn't have bought that eSol because it's so good and she likes it so much. She keeps driving it. Whether she's going to Hampshire, we're now about to go off to um, Wales in the car as well. Yeah, that's Wales over in the west of the country, not Wales. <laughs> <laughs> the Norfolk uh, beach town. So we are charging the electric cars a lot more. That's where a lot more energy is going. So over 100 kilowatt hours more this month, going month and last month, going to electric car charging. House usage last year was 360 kilowatt hours. That includes the battery charging. This year there's less battery charging because we're trying not to use the battery as much. We're trying to use the grid directly which obviously is more efficient. If I run something from the grid directly, I haven't got any DC to AC conversions in and out. So we're probably gaining 10 to 20% on whatever we use from the grid rather than using it from the battery. So 360 kilowatt hours last year, this year up to the 19th, uh, we are 260 kilowatt hours. So uh, very, very interesting that that's 100 kilowatt hours less again. So we've got 100 kilowatt hours more usage on electric car charging, but 100 kilowatt hours less house usage. And that seems to be heating. Um, last year, 181 kilowatt hours. As I said, there's a lot more days where we were below zero outside. It was co quite cold. This year, we're only at 91 kilowatt hours up to the 19th of March for heating our home, which is uh, incredibly low. And the final one, the log count. The log count for 2023 up until the 19th of March, so the whole winter period from October through to the middle of March was 505 logs. We're currently for the same period at 497. So my challenge this year of using the log burner less and using the electric heating uh, more, uh, well I am, I'm using less, but eight. <laughs> Eight logs less is not as much as I'd hoped for, so I must do better, I must try harder. So there you go, there's the update for March. I thought I'd give you a mid-month update just for a change so you can compare to your own data, because uh, I'm sure you're all, like me, looking at your data all of the time, because it's great fun, it's interesting. It's interesting to understand where your data's going, to know what's happening. 
And uh, yeah, we're consistent now with our hot water usage. Our house usage is looking good. Heating is now more about what the weather's like outside and how cold it is. This time in March, it's, it's a nice time for our air to air heating because some days we're turning it on, some days we're turning it off. I think right now it is on, but earlier in the day it was off. And that controllability of having the heating on and off whenever you want, and it feeling warm, within just a couple of minutes, you can feel the warm air, so the house feels warm, even though it's actually not. So this time of year, we've had a few days where the heating's been off completely, it's not been on all day, and then there were another days, like today so far, where it wasn't on overnight at all. Came on first thing in the morning around the breakfast time. While we took Cracker out for a walk, we didn't have the heating on. It's back on again now, and it'll probably go off early afternoon and stay off for the rest of the day. So very, very light heating usage. I know some people are saying, why don't you automate your heating? Why don't you set some home automation automation up to home assistant automation, that is, to automate everything so it stays at a consistent temperature. And I think the reason why I'm not happy to do that is because what feels comfortable to me changes every day, depending on what the outside temperature's like. If it's really warm outside, and some of our rooms gain with um, the solar gain and they become warmer, I don't mind the odd cooler room. So I don't need, say, the cloakroom up to 19, 20, 21 degrees if all of the other main rooms are warm automatically. And I feel warm from the warmth outside. Whereas if it's cold outside, I need the warmth more. There's like a chill factor. So to me, temperatures of 16, 17, 18 on some days feel cold and on some days feel warm. So for me, I can't really automate to a single temperature because it does depend on what the weather's like outside. I like to swap and change it as to how I feel. If I feel cold or cooler, I turn the heating on. If I feel too hot, I turn it off. Anyway, there you go. How have you got on for the month so far? What's it looking like for you? Is it going to be an average middling or not so good? Or has anyone out there got a record month uh, on the cards. Not sure how it is going to end. We'll obviously see at the end of the month, but I, th I think we're going to be average to not so good. I think that's how it's going to finish. Right, again, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that. Take care, and uh, don't forget to leave me some comments below, because one, it helps with the algorithms and promoting the videos, and share the video, but also click the like, and make sure you have subscribed. There's great videos to come, everything electric, more solar panels coming, not a Volvo EX30. Take care, see you again soon for more videos. Bye for now. How was that cracker? Did that sound all right? Yeah? Is that a cut? Have we got that one in the can? Well, I think we have, haven't we? I think it'll do. Quickly edit that and get that out before we go. Yeah? Do you think? Before lunch? <laughs> see ya.